Hello, thanks for joining me. Uh, today I'd like to do a Japanese Dreamcast pickups video. Uh, I've gotten some more games. Actually, I showed them off in my uh, my room tour not too long ago. I'm getting a little behind on these, so I want to catch up. For starters, we have uh, Kuon no Kizuna, or uh, Eternal Bonds. So this game, from what I read, is about a human and a goddess who fell in love and are reincarnated uh, over time. So it's interesting. Uh, it sounds like the chapters are broken up into periods of Japanese history, and I have to assume that you may get to, uh, to actually play out um, some of these uh, romances in uh, different historical periods. But uh, I don't know, I've only played the beginning and the, the game starts off in modern times. And we do have some cliches here in the way that this starts from uh, some of these games we've noticed so far. Uh, the character is actually has been having a dream and wakes up, so that's uh, that's pretty typical. The, uh, the dream was quite disturbing, uh, though, and uh, you see a corpse and it's like a murder. There's, there's this face with blood all over it. It's, it's pretty disturbing. Um, but uh, we can see here that it's presented in what I think of as um, sort of a real visual novel style. That's a, a term that I think has um, become, you know, I, something that I've only really heard in the past several years. And for me, it was in conjunction with playing Tsukihime. It was when I really sort of was first introduced to that term. So I think of a visual novel as um, kind of this style of the, the grayed out background with text on top of it. and that really enforces its its reading a novel aspect. So in this, even when there's characters on the screen, uh, there's no there's no text boxes, um, there's no voice acting even. This is all uh, reading. So it's very novel like. Um, but I think it seems like a pretty interesting game. It apparently was kind of controversial when it came out for being a console game with a love scene. Next up is Memories Off Complete. So here's another one by Kindle Imagine Develop. You may remember them from the Infinity series and Treasure Strike. Now, I do think it's easy to pigeonhole companies when they become associated with certain styles of game. Here we have Memories Off Complete, which is another Galge. But I, I wouldn't say that that's um, really a fair uh, way to, to pigeonhole uh, Kindle Imagine Develop. They have worked on a, a variety of different games for all kinds of systems uh, sort of all along in the history of gaming. So, uh, But this does appear to have been a very successful uh, Galge. This uh, went on. Uh, it seems like there are seven uh, main games in the series, and there's even more uh, sort of spin-offs and, and side stories associated with it, uh, even up to, um, you know, close to the present day. So, uh, this also manages to avoid some of the tropes that we've seen in these other games. Um, you know, you're not being woken up or woken up by a girl, you just kind of, you're starting your day, and you're on your way to school. Now this girl is like, hey, you know, are you doing anything this Sunday? And you're like, well... But not really. What's going on? And so she's like, you know, he -he -he. Um, so he says, you know, she kind of shakes her head and and breaks into a something of a mischievous grin. It's like, well, actually, you know, I have an invitation uh, to an amusement park. You're like an invitation to an amusement park. So anybody that criticizes Shenmue for its ridiculous dialogue in terms of this repeating questions back, rest assured it's not the only game that does that. It's like, so, uh, you, you, want, you want to go with me? And uh, you're, you're just like, well, this is just normal, right? You know, it's not, it's not like a date. But of course it is a date, because <laughs> uh, you, you actually suggest uh, taking, it uh, sounds like one of your other uh, childhood friends, this other girl along, and she's just like, no, 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 she's, she's busy. <laughs> so, uh, so it's pretty obvious what's going on here, but uh, you know, that's pretty much all that's happened at the beginning of the game here. Um, she invites you on a date, but it uh, seems interesting so far. Next up is another Memories Off game. This is uh, Omoide ni Kawarukimi. So you might translate this as you that becomes a memory, or maybe the you in my memories, or even I kind of like you in my heart. I don't know if that's perhaps taking too much uh, liberty. 
but this game came out a few years after the original Memories Off game. And this uh, this was released in 2002. The original game came out in 1999. It's like it's it's morning. It's a, a typical morning. But already, I think that we see a bit of an evolution from the first game, just in the way that this starts. Uh, it's presented with some quick cuts here. You have some uh, scaling effects and. Uh, I interesting uh, sound effects are used. There's actually no music in this uh, this intro so far. But uh, now we get some music, and I just kind of want to showcase the the backgrounds and the music a little bit here. So. Uh, this does uh, have a, a little bit of cliches here that it, it dabbles in, so you're just like, whoa, whoa what was that? So he's like, I, I, am, I am neither, I don't remember being either your mother or your housekeeper. <laughs> so it's kind of like, whoa, like, <laughs> that, that, that uh, you know, sounds like a, uh, a married couple's argument or something like that. But he's like, oh, I remember from my dream this morning. So apparently he dreamt about this woman, and he's like, that that seemed, ju you know, like her just now. But he's like, no, she's not there anymore. He's like, no, he's like, no way. Uh, you know, it couldn't have been. So I don't know what that's all about, but apparently you saw this woman that reminded you of someone you dreamed about. And then uh, when you're on the train uh, going to school, this girl just barely makes it onto the train. This is kind of the event at the beginning of the game. And it appears that she goes to your same school. Uh, you're wearing the same uniform, but uh, she has the unfortunate uh, accident of getting her skirt caught in the door as she just barely makes it onto the train. And of course, the uh, train stop that you guys are going to, that side of the doors don't open up. So there's it's an interesting kind of comical situation here at the beginning of the game. But um, this looks pretty good, the art looks pretty good, the music looks pretty good, so it could be an interesting game. Uh, next we have Rune Jade. So this is one by Hudson, um, published by Hudson, possibly developed by Hudson, and uh, it's a, it's an RPG. It seems to be in Diablo style, and uh, the cool thing about this is that it's an online RPG. Uh, it does seem that you can play it offline, but um, but it has an online mode, and boy, I sure loved me some Fantasy Star Online back in the day. And I've never really gotten into Diablo, but I have to imagine that um, playing this game on the Dreamcast online would have been pretty, pretty darn awesome at the time. But here we can see a pretty nice animated opening sequence. And here's the character select. So we seem to have male and female versions of four different classes. So it's a warrior, martial artist, ninja, and then uh, magic users. So I'm just gonna go ahead and pick this uh, martial artist here. And here we are at the beginning of the game. So you can see this isometric uh, sort of perspective. Um, kind of realistic looking um, sort of PC style graphics that we have here and I have to admit I just don't get to any gameplay in this because um, you have to jump through some hoops you have to like go talk to this guy and go talk to that guy and then um, you know read all the tutorials and do all this stuff but apparently it does have an offline mode uh, looks like an interesting game I bet th this would have been fun back in the day this one is Kita E or go north so this game has an amazingly catchy opening theme song. It sounds hokey at first, but if you listen to it, I don't know, it's been stuck in my head ever since I played this game. Uh, I'm not going to include it here for fear of a copyright strike, but check it out if you're interested. So this is another one that is published by Hudson, but it's not developed by them. Um, I actually um, found the developer is Red Entertainment Corporation. And I'd not heard of them before, but these appear to be ex an extremely, extremely important uh, developer of very significant franchises. We're talking about Tengai Makyo, 
uh, the Galaxy Fraulein Unis series, uh, Soccer Wars, um, developed along with, uh, with Sega, um, the Gungrave games, the Bonk series of games with, with Hudson, so um, very important developer, and uh, this is a game that they developed. So it's like, oh yeah, so, um, you know, that guy's, is, his plane is coming in, yeah, it's coming in at 10 in the morning. It's like, well, you know, I've, I gotta work, so, uh, you know, I'm not gonna be able to, to go greet him. It's like, uh, could, could you do it? She's like, well, yeah. It's like, but I, you know, haven't seen each other since we were little, so I'm, I'm wondered, worried if I'm gonna recognize him. So it's like, well, you know, I was thinking about that, and so I, uh, I prepared this. So... <laughs> this is a sign that you can hold up at the airport with, you know, of course, the name of the character that you just input moments ago. <laughs> She's like, it's a little embarrassing. She's like, I don't, I don't want to hear any complaints. It's like, all right, I'm, I'm heading out. So, uh, so it seems that you are, you are going north from Tokyo to, uh, to Hokkaido. You're going to, I think, Sapporo. And um, you're going to see some uh, people that you knew when you were a kid, I guess. I don't know if you're living there or what's going on. But um, you're on the plane and this woman's like, you know, your seatbelt is rattling or something. So we have three choices. We can choose to apologize immediately. We can uh, put our seatbelt on and, and uh, make, you know, complain or we can just ignore her. So, um, so I choose the first option. So we apologize and put our belt on. And he's like, well, and it was kind of a, a clumsy conversation. So she's like, no, you know, just don't apologize. And she she reads her book. So, um, you know, you're like, well, I'm I'm making a trip, and it's going to be a long flight, and you know, it would have been nice to have somebody to talk to, but. Uh, but that didn't really uh, lead to any kind of a conversation. So, uh, interesting looking game, and um, I really like the style. The character designs are really cute, and uh, all the backgrounds are, are photos, which I think is interesting. So it's the photo backgrounds and the, the cute characters. Uh, really interested to see where this game goes. Uh, finally, we have Black Matrix Advanced. Two disc. So this game starts off with a relatively disturbing cutscene that just showcases the dichotomy between these two races. You have these um, people with black wings and people with white wings. It's kind of like demons and angels. And it starts off with like an angel being being sacrificed. Um, but then we get to pick a, a buddy, quote unquote. So I'll pick uh, Prague here. So uh, this, uh, you again dabbling in some some sort of cliches here. You have the character is actually amnesic and and waking up here. She's like, oh, thank goodness. Seriously, how how long did you plan to make me worry? So uh, this this girl is classic textbook tsundere. She's she's very tsun and she's very dede. It's like, huh? What? Are, are you hurt anywhere? It's like, wait. It can't be. You, you don't remember who I am. It's like, wait, wait, you, you don't remember who you are either? It's like, well, your name is... So we get a chance to put in our name. Um, so our name is Abel to start off with. So uh, there are a lot of biblical uh, kind of religious uh, sort of Christian uh, mythology and references in, in this. Um, and it's interesting. Uh, this game is developed by Flight Plan. And I, that really stood out for me. I was like, flight plan, flight plan. Man, I've heard them before. And um, I believe it's the uh, the Summon Knight series, but that isn't what I was thinking of. They have also developed um, uh, Eternal Poison, which uh, I really like. Um, and they, they share some similarities with this game, I think, just in terms of tone. And you have an isometric perspective when you're actually playing the game. But um, here, this is so bleak. Here we see this. Um, you know, these angel kind of white winged characters are obviously they're they're just second class citizens, they're slaves and and uh you know, just obviously completely mis mistreated. So very bleak, uh sort of bizarre, interesting um you know, world that we have here of this this very distinct class system. So I haven't gotten to any combat yet, but this appears to be a strategy RPG, which I'm rather fond of. 
and it's interesting when you start off you are kind of can go around the house and um, do different chores and uh, depending on the chores that you do it'll it'll raise or lower your stats and even this conversation that you're having here I think was influenced by what uh, books you read I think in terms of how this uh, person is is viewing you so uh, interesting stuff um, this looks like a very uh, promising game I don't know how much of it I'm going to play but uh, definitely one of the ones to put on my list to check out more of so those were my Dreamcast uh, Japanese pickups. I hope that you uh, enjoyed that, and I hope that you'll join me again for some more uh, Japanese video gaming related videos. Thank you very much for watching.